we're back here on Inside the Ropes, and this Sunday is double or nothing. One of the big matches is, of course, Stadium Stampede involving the man with me right now, MJF of the Pinnacle. How are you, sir? You know, I just came back from Hawaii. A lot more pores there than you I would have anticipated. Um, eh, not the greatest vacation ever. I probably should have just stayed on Long Island. But I'm here because I'm a professional, Ken. And uh, I'm going to try to answer all of your questions as professionally as I possibly can, even though I can barely understand what you're saying. I mean, the, the Scottish accent is difficult. Um, I want to ask you, first of all, about blood and guts. Obviously, you guys had this big blood and guts match earlier on this month. We know there was plans to do blood and guts last year before the pandemic. I mean, how, how long was blood and, the, blood and guts in the plans for you guys in the inner circle? And how did you feel about, you know, getting involved with that match? Loaded question. As far, as far as I know, uh, I did not know about Blood and Guts until Chris Jericho uh, challenged us for it. Um, once I heard it, was I absolutely ready for it? Absolutely. Uh, I enjoy beating up Chris Jericho. It's fun for me. Um, I've said it time and time again, Chris Jericho was a great friend. He was a great mentor, but he's even better stepping stone. And that was yet another moment, the second time, as a matter of fact, where I've beaten Chris Jericho. So I think it's very obvious now that I am the GOAT. I'm the greatest of all time. And I'm looking forward to beating him a third time this upcoming pay-per-view, Double or Nothing, this Sunday, and officially ending the inner circle forever. And with Blood and Guts, or, you know, the old the nod to War Games from before, War Games tended to be the end of a feud. And, you know, Blood and Guts was kind of the first big match of the inner circle and the pinnacle. How did you feel about that being the thing that kicks off and then kind of, you know, you guys have got to keep following blood and guts i think it made sense for this feud it's the it's definitely the most it's the it's the biggest and most talked about feud let's be honest in aew right now and it makes sense because there's so many massive stars involved in the feud mainly me let's be honest again but um i think it worked for us uh to go out guns a blazing right away because let's face it there's genuine hatred or as you fans like to use insider terms heat there um spears and sammy really don't like each other uh spears hates the fact that a guy that young uh was able to take a spotlight that spears felt he should have had 19 years ago and was never afforded the opportunity to dax and cash proud and powerful they legitimately don't like each other kind of hard to have an even keel ground of one another when you're both raised on completely different sides of American culture uh, and Chris Jericho and MJF, obviously, you know, at first we got along, but I think it's kind of stuck in Chris Jericho's craw that he's playing second fiddle to a 25 year old. Uh, am I shocked by it? Absolutely not. Cause I I'm a prodigy and I've been this great since day one. Um, am I shocked that people are already calling me the number one villain in pro wrestling? Yes. Cause I think I'm salt of the earth. But outside of that, no, I thought it made complete sense for us to start off our quote unquote feud, if you will, at Blood and Guts, because there's a lot of hatred there. And you're going to see just as much hatred and violence at Stadium Stampede. Stadium Stampede is not going to be the match that you saw last year. It's going to be a very different match. And just before we pivot on to Stadium Stampede, one last blood and guts question. Obviously, the big, you know, moment at the end where Chris Jericho fought is, you know, you throw him off the cage, he lands. You know, there's a lot of fan opinion on it. Some people didn't like the camera angle. Some people were kind of wondering, is he still alive? From your perspective, being involved in, in that moment, talk us through how it was for you. So for me personally, to me, let's talk about it from a, symbol, a symbolism standpoint. Here is this 25 year old guy that everybody's saying is not just the future, but he's the present. Here is at that point, um, someone who will go down as the greatest ever in Chris Jericho. We're on the top of the cage, a la the top of the mountain in professional wrestling. And I shoved him off of that. And the last thing you saw was me standing on top of that cage and sucking it all in. Every single boo, every single tear, that's what the end of Blood and Guts was all about. The unfortunate thing was I didn't shove Chris hard enough. I think if I did, maybe he wouldn't have sh shown up the following week. I do know he legitimately really messed up his arm, um, which put a smile on my face. Uh, he was also about four inches away from 
a metal railing on our stage that definitely would have killed him. Unfortunately, he missed that railing. It is what it is. Um, but in that moment, what that represented was I'm, I'm the king of pro wrestling now. I'm the GOAT. I'm the guy who's going to be leading the charges industry for the next 25 years. And while, of course, there were people talking about production, which is laughable to me, none of you guys know what you're talking about, but it's fine. There were also people when they were done talking about the bullshit going, okay, yeah, I, I can't play mental gymnastics anymore and pretend that MJF isn't the guy. It's impossible. We're way past that point now. And I'm proud of that. And let's talk about Stadium Stampede on Sunday. You know, the, the Stadium Stampede match last year, everybody loved it. And it was voted match of the year some places. You mentioned earlier it's going to be a very different type of match. How do you approach it with the first one being sort of so well remembered? The approach is going to be real. The approach is going to be we're going to give them everything we have in uh, our ammo and ignition, and they are too. We're going to be throwing bombs in there live rounds. It's going to be a fight. It's not going to be a comedy bit. It's not going to be uh, a show. It's not going to be an SNL skit. It's going to be a, a fight and a brawl. And I think it's going to be just as violent, if not more violent, than Blood and Guts was. Is there, you know, is, is there a pressure from, you know, Blood and Guts, you guys were the first one. Stadium Stampede, it's the, the second one. Is that There's better? zero pressure in the sense that um, it's, it's, how do I put this? Is it the same match? Yes, it has the same name, but it is not going to be the same match. Um, it would be like, I'm trying to think of a good example. If you watch a Netflix show and you have a main protagonist and a main antagonist, and then the second season is a completely different story, but it has the same exact show name. Mm -hmm. That's, that's what this is. That's what stadium stamp two, stadium stampede part two is going to be. It's going to have literally nothing to do with the first one and be nothing like the first one, but it's under the same name and handle. And then I guess the last question about Stadium Stampede is that last year when, you know, the participants involved have all talked about how it was filmed through the night. It took till 5 a.m. to do it. This year, you guys have got a full packed house as a crowd. Can, you know, can you give us any indication of what to expect? I'm sorry, I, I just couldn't understand with your accent. Can you repeat what you said? Can you give us any indication of what to expect from a sort of live perspective, um, given that there's going to be a full crowd this year? Yeah, man, it's gonna be it's gonna be a rowdy crowd for sure. A lot of pours are gonna be in the arena. Luckily, I'm in a match where I'm not gonna to have to deal with all those people. Look, here's my thing. Everybody in the back is so excited about fans. Uh, I think a part of me is definitely going to miss uh, pandemic wrestling uh, because I didn't have to. Uh, let's be honest, I just didn't have to look at all these disgusting people. And now we're gonna be going to different states. A lot of them are in the south. Uh. And I'm not looking forward to it at all, but I'm glad everybody else is stoked and happy about having a crowd back. I was living my best life in the pandemic. You know, the year 2020 and the early 2021 for me, probably one of my favorite years of my life. No one bothered me. My career's at an all-time high. I, again, I didn't have to look at all of you people. It was a dream come true. And unfortunately, now they have this vaccine and everything's opening up again. And I'm kind of bummed about it, but it is what it is. And my last question is the Pinnacle, obviously a big faction in pro wrestling, but there is no female member of the Pinnacle. If you were to look at the AEW roster, is there anyone that you think is Pinnacle material? Yeah, I've said it before, Britt, Britt Baker. Um, me and Britt have actually uh, formed a bit of a bond. I still think she's a total bitch and she definitely thinks I'm a shithead. But talent recognizes talent, real recognizes real. Do I think we're going to add a female in the pinnacle? Probably not. I, I think right now um, we are easily the most dominant faction group, whatever you want to put it, in professional wrestling. We're in the most intense and intriguing angle. Um, and then when we're done with the inner circle, after we make them disband this Sunday, all we're going to focus on is gold. Now, after we win all the gold, will there perhaps be a conversation where we're going, well, there's only one title left. Then would it possibly make sense for me to pull Brittany Baker over to the side uh, and just have a conversation? 
maybe right now doesn't make sense. But I'm very much so look, looking forward to seeing Britt Baker become the new AEW uh, women's champion. Well, MJF, I want to wish you all the luck in the world at the Stadium Stampede this Sunday at Double or Nothing. Yeah, whatever, Kenny.